you have to be an example as a leader. You have to be the one that actually do things and go forward. That confidence is not something that just came, but it's something that's been building throughout his life. That's just D'Amico. Behind his seemingly effortless leadership as a linebacker and a play caller, Texans head coach D'Amico Ryans credits that ability not only to his hometown of Bessemer, Alabama, but to its community. Bessemer is really known for a lot, a lot, a lot of blue collar people right, who really, they grind and they find a way you know, to work. A lot of my coaches would work long shifts throughout the day and they would still come out and take the time to coach us. One of those people, Ryan's second cousin, a pastor named Joe Cash, first challenged Ryan's to step up and lead others. Miko was always listening when he was a small child in this church. One of the things I said, well, I need you all to learn how to speak. So we're gonna have a youth program coming up. So I want y'all to conduct the whole services. It's probably around 12 or 13 where I gave my first sermon. What was that moment like for you? Oh, nervous. <laughs> you talk about nervous and you go through and you practice, but most of the time you're practicing in the mirror <laughs> and right. you don't have an audience. So when it's time to like really walk up and deliver a sermon, it's like, all right, try not to stumble over this. Most kids at that age are kind of shy, but like Nico was the first speaker. So he take leadership. That aspect of what we were doing here is to help them to gain confidence. It was like any child, and you try to encourage them to speak up. But, you know, it's like first time doing anything, well, I didn't do so good. But when you motivate people and pump them up and they're the time, they want to do it again. That is a, a true fear of a lot of people standing up and having to talk to many, a lot of people staring at you. And now it's like I go into a team meeting room, I don't even think about it. For Ryan's, a career path towards coaching seemed inevitable. It was back in Bessemer in 2010 where he first felt the urge to draw a place. My first coaching itch was Bessemer City High School. Coach Dennis Alexander was the head coach at the time, one of my former teammates from the University of Alabama. These kids at Bessemer, they had been losing a lot. So they had a couple rough seasons. And I told Dennis, it was like, hey, Dennis, you mind if I coach? Can I help you out coaching? We struggled to get things going. We only won two games our first year. But during that second season, uh, that was the season that they actually had the lockout. So he didn't really have anything to do. I go home at night and I'm like drawing up a little playbook. I'm drawing up blitzes for this kid. That kid's like, I'm staying up. It's like 11 at night, I'm still drawing. You have to bring a different mentality when you're coaching. When you're looking at coaches, one of the things that you really marvel about is how well do they reach their players? You know, how well can they get those guys to play at a level that's out of their mind? And that's one thing he was able to do in a short time. He was able to help our guys on that defensive side of the ball, get them to play lights out. To see the elation, excitement on their faces, I was like, wow. And that, that was the hook. <laughs> The same thing you see on the sideline every Sunday where he's hopping around and having fun and high-fiving and chest bumping the guy. He's doing the same thing on the sideline with us in high school. I tell my guys, never forget like how fun football is. And it's the hook that got me into coaching was the fun, the excitement that those kids show. And that's what I want our guys to have even on this level. He's not only trying to impact guys through football, but through life. That's important to him. 